Hello then, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. This is Al24 News, streaming live from the capital Algiers and coming up next in our news program. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in a visit to Algeria to finalize deals seeking to both Italy's gas supplies as Europeans brace for a possible cut-off of Russian gas. With Sri Lanka gripped by economic turmoil, acting President Ranil Rickman Singh has said a new state of emergency is needed to quell social unrest. Firefighters struggle Sunday to contain wildfires raging out of control in France and Spain as Europe wilts under an unusual extreme heat wave. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has dismissed two important figures in the government, accusing them of betrayal and collaborating with Russia. Hello again and welcome. Those who are today's top stories. The first ever extreme heat, weave, uh, heat uh, warning is in effect for large parts of Europe as authorities prepare for a record high temperature that are already disrupting travel, healthcare and schools. Marwa Belayron, what follow? Britain was on course for its hottest day on record on Monday. The UK Met Office has issued its first ever red alert for extreme heat, which will last during Monday and Tuesday, cautioning there was a risk to life. I've been a meteorologist for about 30 years and I've never seen the charts that I've seen today. And the speed at which we are seeing these exceptionally high temperatures is, 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 in, is, is broadly in line with what we were saying. But to be honest, as a meteorologist, to see the brutality of the heat that we're expecting tomorrow is quite astounding. Um, and it does worry me a lot, and, and my colleagues here in the Met Office, that this sort of unprecedented heat could be a regular occurrence by the end of the century. Wildfires have raided through France over the last few weeks, as well as in other European countries like Portugal and Spain, as temperatures have soared. French authorities evacuated thousands of residents in southeastern France as firefighters continued to battle rage and blaze. It is a fire that has grown massively over the past few days. We managed to contain it. We're making it go where we want it to go while fulfilling our objectives to protect people since there were no civilians or firefighters wounded and to protect houses. Elsewhere in Spain, dozens of fires have scorched thousands of acres of land, forcing authorities to also evacuate people from their homes. Firefighters battled in the early hours of Monday to contain another disaster in Catalonia that had spread dangerously close to residential areas. The state meteorological agency issued a weather forecast predicting significantly high temperatures in several parts of Spain. Much of Europe is baking in a heat wave that has pushed temperatures into over 100 Fahrenheit in some regions, with wildfires raging across cinder dry countryside in Portugal, Spain and France. In the same line of thought, the fires are ravaging forests in the northern Morocco in the last few days in the forests of Teza, Tetuan and Alash. As a result of these vicious blazes, one person died and more than a thousand families in the affected areas were evacuated. Firefighters worked to control a raging forest fire near the Moroccan town of Qasr al-Kabir in al Arsh region. Morocco is uh, continuing its normalization of relations with the Zionist entity that has seen a wide opposition by the Moroccan people. This time, the chief of the staff of the Zionist army is on a visit to Morocco, which is a further sign of snubbing the Palestinian cause that a Mahzen regime is following in addition to the territorial unacceptable strategy that puts Moroccan people's interest at stake. Despite the Moroccan people's utter rejection of normalization of relations with the Zionist entity, the Moroccan government opened the door wide for the Zionist occupation to roam throughout the country, taking advantage of Morocco and its people. Well, first and foremost, it represents a betrayal of the Palestinian cause 
and of the Palestinian people themselves. Morocco is being offered a deal. If it accepts the crimes of the apartheid against the native Palestinians, then in return, the US will accept its crimes within the Western Sahara region, which it currently occupies. In this way, it is in fact getting a green light to become more aggressive against the Polisario Front, which is the government in exile from the Western Sahara. Um, and the West will turn a blind eye. In an important development, the chief of staff of the Occupation Army is starting a visit to Morocco amidst fierce and harsh criticism to the Mahzen regime, who is reaffirming its stance seen as a balatant violation of the United Nations Charter of the Resolutions of International Legitimacy. Well, Morocco is losing the battle for public opinion, uh, particularly in Africa. The African Union has accepted the, the independence of Western Sahara at the expense of losing Morocco from the Union, which is a huge step for a group which is set up to, to keep um, Africa united and to keep African countries working together. This shows um, that Morocco is the only actual um, UN-recognized country that is not uh, recognized by the African Union or a member of the African Union. It shows how deeply the African Union feels in regards to the Western Sahara question. The visit of the Zionist top commander to Morocco has seen a rejection demonstration in the streets as people are expected to gather in front of the parliament to renew their refusal of relations, reiterating their unwavering support for the Palestinian people after Morocco became the sixth Arab state to officially recognize the Zionist state. Well, Moroccans are courageous and uh, passionate people and Morocco is a country with an ancient and proud past. Many people there uh, support their monarchy gener uh, generally and will be at odds at how to reconcile these points with the, the great betrayal that is currently taking place. Um, there will be anger at this decision, but will that anger be enough to get a large response? Analysts consider this first ever visit a political and military infiltration in the North African country. It is worth mentioning that Morocco opted for clinching a deal many see as a blackmail just to obtain more support to recognize its so-called sovereignty over Western Sahara, which remains the only colony in the African continent. Meanwhile, the country is experiencing an unprecedented rise in prices, which has prompted citizens to express their dissatisfaction, whether by taking to the streets or through initiatives on social networks. The permanent representative of Algeria to the United Nations, Nader al Arbawi, in his catching reply published by the, uh, the Security Council, dismissed the false and the misleading allegation made by the American representative in New York and recalled the historical truth and fundamentals of the conflict in Western Sahara. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi is visiting Algeria on Monday to finalize deals seeking to both Italy's gas supplies as Europeans brace for a possible cutoff of Russian gas. The Italian delegation includes a range of high-ranking ministers, including the Foreign Minister, Interior Minister, Justice Minister and Ecological Transition Minister, showing just uh, how important the government considers the meeting. They will hold a day of talks, meet with Algerian President Mr. Abdel Majid Tabon and sign joint agreements. According to a statement from the Ministry of Transport, an agreement was signed to open the direct airline between Algeria and the Republic of Venezuela. The Algerian Minister of Transport said that opening of the direct air route between Algeria and Caracas would contribute to consolidation of economic and cultural relations between the two countries, improve the volume of trade and strengthening tourism and scientific and cultural missions. According to the communique of the Council of Ministers Sunday, Cabinet meeting finished with the approval of 2022 complementary finance bill in accordance with the guideline of the President of the Republic aimed at preserving social balances and maintaining the purchasing power of citizens, avoiding new taxes or increases. At the same meeting, the Council of Ministers approved the draft status of the entrepreneur presented by the minister delegate and uh, to the prime minister responsible for knowledge, economy and startups, which is to give a new impulse to those involved in entrepreneurship and startups. 
to a different matter now, Sri Lanka's acting president has declared the state of emergency as his administration seeks to quell social unrest and tackle an economic crisis gripping the island nation. Rickman Singh had announced a state of emergency last week after President Gotabaya Rajabaksa fled the country to escape a popular uprising against the government. Friendly, uh, people friendly government and uh, the, they want to change this political culture and they want to change this system, economic and social system and uh, with the Ranil Vikram Singh and uh, with this group of uh, the present government, uh, we don't think we can uh, achieve these goals. EU foreign policy had Joseph Borrell announced that one of the most recent sections seeks to cut 90% of Europe's oil purchases from Russia by the end of 2022. Joseph Borrell insisted earlier this month that Europe does not want war with Russia, arguing that sanctions are key to, uh, to countering what he said, Moscow's aggression, and declaring the financial restriction were already having an effect. Russian Defense Minister Grish Wigor has made a visit to his troops in the Donbass where he affirmed that Moscow's priority is destruction of enemy long-range missiles and artillery with high-precision weapons. Meantime, the conflict continues in the Donbass after an eight-day pass. Nabil Khazini. Moscow has stepped up its military operation in Ukraine. This video, released by the Russian Defense Ministry, shows the Russian army destroying Ukrainian military targets, including a HIMARS rocket launcher system and a storage facility housing Harbin anti-ship missile. Long-range air-based missiles destroyed a depot in industrial plant in southern Ukrainian city of Odessa that stored Harpoon anti-ship missiles delivered to Ukraine by NATO countries. And this footage shows the extent of destruction in Kharkiv's biggest residential district, where in every corner buildings partially collapsed and only few remain unscathed in Ukraine's second biggest city. The destruction of enemy long-range missiles and artillery with high-precision weapons, from which shelling of residential areas of settlements in Donbass is carried out, as well as intentional arson of fields with wheat and storage facilities with the grain, are the priority, says Russia's Ministry of Defense, during a visit Sergei Shoigo made for his trips in eastern Ukraine. In Toretsk, a city in the Donetsk region, shelling continues. Galina Dorova woke up to the sound of explosions, followed by a storm of black smokes and fire. There was like a boom. I opened my eyes and heard my child shouting, Mom, but he didn't run towards me. I was very scared, and I hoped that he still had his legs and his arms. Then I ran to my child's room. It's right there, and it was terrifying. Thank God he's alive and well. Russia announced that it had officially ended the operational pause of its army decreed eight days ago, and the bombardment resumed with more intensity in the Donbass, whose total control is the main short-term objective for Moscow. Former Russian President Dmitry, Dmitry Medvedev has warned that Ukraine and the West will face a Judgment Day response should they attempt to military dispute Russia's control of Crimea. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky lashed out these commands and said that no one will accept such intimidation. Several shelling were reported in Bakhmut district in the 17th of July 2022. As a result, three civilians were injured in addition to three children sustained a sharp null injury of the incident. The prosecutor's office reported that private houses, out uh, building and garages were damaged as a result of the shelling. As numerous European nations impose sanctions on Russia, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, will visit Azerbaijan in the hopes of importing natural gas to lessen the country's dependence on Russian energy. The EU Commission said in a statement on July 15th that Ursula's visit to Baku was intended to improve the existing cooperation between the EU and Azerbaijan. 
but it is expected that the senior official will attempt to bargain and bring more energy players to Europe. Russian President Vladimir Putin and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will travel to Iran for a two-day official visit to discuss bilateral and global issues with their Iranian counterpart Ibrahim Raisi. The three presidents will also hold talks on Syria. The Tehran summit will enable Recep Tayyip Erdogan to hold his first meeting with Vladimir Putin since the start of the conflict in Ukraine last February. A Ukrainian cargo plane carrying munitions from Serbia to Bangladesh crashed near the city of Kavala in northern Greece, killing all crew members on board. The eight bodies of the victims were found and are being recovered. Greek Fire Brigade spokesman said that the experts at the crash site haven't found any dangerous materials. A Texas legislative probe of the Uvalde school shooting that left 21 dead blamed systematic failures and poor leadership for contributing to the death toll. A report released on Sunday found that Texas House of Representatives Committee investigation marked the most exhaustive attempt too far to determine why it took more than an hour for police and other officers to confront and kill the 18 years old the gunman at Robe Elementary School. Texas lawmakers on Sunday released a video showing law enforcement's delayed response to the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, that led to the deaths of 19 students and two teachers. The body cam footage of one officer who was among the first to arrive inside the school just a few minutes after the gunman had fired over 100 rounds inside the classrooms, showed the chaos. <laughs> Authorities said in May that frantic children inside the classrooms called 911 at least six times while officers waited in the hallway. A new investigation into the shooting has found that no one was able to stop the gunman, in part because of systemic failures by nearly everyone involved. If there's only one thing that I can tell you is there were multiple systemic failures. I would invite everybody to read the entire report. You cannot cherry pick one sentence and use it to say everything without reading it all together and with context. But if we need a simple phrase to describe what the report says, again, I would tell you multiple systemic failures. The nearly 80 pages report said 376 law enforcement officers rushed to the school in a chaotic scene, marked by a lack of clear leadership and sufficient urgency. The report lists countless law enforcement mistakes, which expanded far beyond any single commander or agency. Those facts will allow those agencies to take a deeper dive into the actions of law enforcement and hold them accountable. The report says if you're not willing to put the lives of the people you serve, of those children, before you are own, in my view, you should find another job. Texas lawmakers said they were releasing interim findings because the victims, their families and the entire Uvalde community have already waited too long for answers and transparency. The preliminary findings by Texas lawmakers are the first from multiple ongoing probes, examining what went wrong in the response to the massacre. They offer the most comprehensive analysis to date of the police response, which has triggered broad criticism from victims' families, the Uvalde community and lawmakers. Three people were fatally shot and two were injured Sunday evening at an Indian mall after a man with a rifle opened fire in a food cart and an armed civilian shot and killed, and killed him. Greenwood Police Department Chief Jim Ison said that the man entered the Greenwood Park Mall with the rifle and several magazines of ammunition and began firing in the food cart. An armed civilian killed the man as the total of four people were killed uh, two were injured. I soon said that there was one male and four female victims, but could not say which of those had been killed and which had been wounded. 
The British TV broadcaster ITV News hosted a second debate where the five Conservative uh, contenders viewed to be a Britain's next Prime Minister cl clashed while each can candidate was trying to prove why they should take over leadership of the country. The battle to be the next leader remains unpredictable. One candidate will be knocked out every day in the next three days leaving a final two to face the verdict of Conservative Party members. Security forces fired tear gas on, at the Sudanese protesters marched in the capital Khartoum on Sunday against the country's military leadership, holding it responsible for an outbreak of violence in the Blue Night State during last week's clashes between the House between Hossa and Fang tribes, more than 30 individuals were killed and 100 more were wounded. Military authorities said that their coup was vital and maintained Sudan's stability in the face of political turmoil. There has been excessive and extreme violence and a lot of police forces. The revolution continues and the fight continues. We will be victorious, God willing. To this end, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a reminder for our main top stories. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in a visit to Algeria to finalize deals seeking to both Italy's gas supplies as Europeans brace for a possible cut of Russian gas. With Sri Lanka grieved by economy trauma, acting President Raniel Rekhmanvan Singh has said a new state of emergency is needed to quell social unrest. Firefighters struggle on Sunday to contain wildfire raging out of control in France and Spain as Europe was under an unusual extreme heat wave. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has dismissed two important figures in his government, accusing them with betrayal and collaborating with Russia. That's all we have got so far. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye-bye.